Hi guys, Gabby here with ID TV, and I'm here with Megan. Oh. And Megan is the screenwriter, right, for our Justice League and Ruby crossover. Correct, yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by and saying hi to us. Thanks so much for being here. Of course. So I would imagine it is a little intimidating writing such iconic characters as the Justice League. What was that process like for you? So I, you know, if I thought about it too much, then I will get paralyzed and not be able to do my job. Um, so what I tend to do is I really dive deep into the characters and, and find ways in which they make me, like they make pieces of me and feel different and feel new to me um, and work out of that. And, and then it becomes like, oh, they're my friends. I know them. They're my next door neighbors. <laughs> That's so cool to kind of like have that emotional connection to each character that you write. Was there anybody in this piece in particular of part one and part two, maybe both of them, that um, you kind of felt like was, was your voice in a very specific way? I love them all very much. And I think that like each and every one of them have a very specific piece of me that I was able to give to them. Um, something that I'm really grateful for that we were able to do in the movie is to tell a story about anxiety. Um, yes. So being able to tell yes. Jessica, uh, Jessica's story, The Green Lantern, and how she is processing with anxiety and dealing with anxiety in the same way that I deal with anxiety was, was yeah. really important and really special to me. Yeah, and I mean, in the, this piece, they're all teenagers, that's right? Right, yes, so, that's true. <laughs> so they have a whole different voice and a whole bunch of different emotions and feelings. That's and right. um, so was it easier or harder to write teenagers? I'm a little embarrassed by how easy it is to pull out my inner teenager for things like this. <laughs> um, I was able to sort of tap into some some long lost voices that aren't actually that long or lost yes. and uh, was able to, to play around with that that world and sandbox right those teenagers still live in there and sometimes you gotta let them out exactly <laughs> like, I hate everything mom I was gonna say so what was teenage Megan like oh man teenage Megan thought that she was emo but she lived in Florida and it was too hot <laughs> It was too hot to be real emo. It was too hot to be real emo. And also she was too happy to be real emo. Uh, so like, I just walked around with a sweatshirt being like, Moo. Oh no. So were you listening to like Panic at the Disco and everything? Oh no, I wasn't allowed Panic at the Disco, oh, okay. but I was allowed um, All American Rejects. Oh, okay. Some 41, don't know how that happened. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, what was the other one? My favorite one was Simple Plan. Oh, yes. Yeah. Simple Plan. Now that is like classic yep. teenage <laughs> angst right there. Simple Plan. Anytime I have to go back to a, uh, a teenage vibe or mentality, I pull up some Simple Plan and I pull up some Michelle Branch and both oh. of those will get me back there. <laughs> you know, Michelle Branch will definitely do the trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are so excited to watch part one of Justice League and Ruby. Thank you so much for stopping by and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your WonderCon. Are you going to any other panels after?